Do you know 85% of people who play daily fantasy sports lose? Is it really that surprising? You're playing against thousands of other lineups, not to mention experts who have more tools and more time. Introducing the first ever daily fantasy sports book, Stat Hero. Stat Hero shows you their lineups and dares you to beat them. It's you versus the house in a head to head fantasy matchup. Go to stathero.com slash win big. Sign up for free, and right now you can get three times back on your first play. Go to stathero.com slash win big. Restrictions apply. See stathero.com for details. Thank you for listening to the Tatnus Podcast on the Tatnus Co. Network. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. A Mercedes kind of sentiment. Luxury and trust in me to honor the free we all should be in. See my son's out burst into yin and yang right and left me and What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Tatnus Podcast. We are back in business, dude. Um, we've been kind of away for a while because of... A bit of personal stuff, and um, also a new project, a huge new project that will be coming in the distant future, unfortunately, because it's such a big job, but it's so big, and I can't wait to share that with you guys. But the personal stuff, this is cool. Honestly, this is good news, don't you worry. Um, I, I know sometimes my listeners email and whatever, and you know, kind of concerned, uh, but the hiatus was for a positive reason, and that reason is, after 38 years, I found my mom, y'all, it's the weirdest thing, it's the craziest thing, I got this email one day saying, dude, I found your mom, and call me, and I'm gonna give you her number, and, uh, I kind of was like, not sure how I felt about that, uh, just because, I didn't know, in nowhere in that email did the person in question say that my mom knew that I've been found, um, or that, uh, I was supposed to be calling, so I didn't really know if I was somebody she wanted to hear from, or what the situation was, so, you know, I, I thought out of respect for her, I would maybe not, uh, jump on that right away, and, um, maybe just hold off until I got more uh, information about that and where she stood on that. And, of course, in the studio, here goes an ambulance of some sort. God damn, every time. Sorry, y'all. But um, it's just too hot to not open the window, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the studio windows, it gets really stuffy in here, bro. But anyways, um, so I you know, didn't really respond to that email, and then that person called me, and told me everything, and said, look, dude, she told me that, you know, she never chose to not be in your life, it was a whole thing, so it was like, you know, she's dying to hear from you, and so I called her, and everything's been so cool, dude, so, um, you know, I just wanted to let everybody know what's going on, and why I've been away, and I know it's kind of abrupt. I didn't warn anybody there was going to be a hiatus, but I also didn't expect to have all this happen. And then the new project, uh, which is massive, it's going to take some time. And uh, also, I feel personally right now, I kind of feel like I've been run over by a truck <laughs> in the best possible way because I am training so hard um, for upcoming movie so now borders are starting to open up again in the future, near future, for us here in Canada. And that means we get to travel a bit and we get to, you know, actually work again on films. So big stuff coming. And uh, whoever's blowing up my fucking messenger right now is really pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I didn't mute my phone. Again, I forget all the time. Uh, Producer Blue will probably be joining us soon uh, in a little bit on the show. Again, and touch base with everybody. And we're going to talk about some cool stuff. Uh, speaking of movies, uh, we won't get too much into the movie that I will be working on because of non-disclosure agreements and all that uh, for now. But I will say that my co-star is absolutely stunning and was a guest on my show mira morningstar is now a guest on you know a former guest on the show uh that will be a guest again 
in the future for a show about the paranormal because we both seem to be really interested in that but she has also done me the courtesy of actually agreeing to be the co-star with me in this upcoming movie and that's gonna be awesome she's wonderful love her to death uh we became very close she's a sweetie so i'm really stoked about that but because we can't really talk about that movie right now uh we're gonna talk about halloween kills the new movie coming out just saw the trailer dude so cool so good uh we're gonna talk about how dope that fucking trailer was but we're also gonna talk about people complaining too damn much about how the trailer allegedly shows too much and all this nonsense and it's just funny because the movie has been delayed by a year because of covid and everybody was kind of dying to see a trailer and then they put out the teaser trailer which is super short of course hence the teaser and everyone's like that's it there should be more blah 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 i can't wait to see the official trailer so then they put out like a two and a half minute official trailer and people are bitching that uh it showed too much of the movie like you can't please anybody these days man uh we're also going to talk about some other stuff too and before we go further i just wanted to say happy belated father's day to all my listeners out there who are fathers uh appreciate y'all um you know, good looking out, being there for your kids, that's dope, that's what you should do, you know what I'm saying, and for those of the fathers out there that aren't permitted to see their kids or whatever, you know, there's always those situations, happy belated Father's Day to y'all too, um, and people are blowing up my fucking phone, being famous blows, but, <laughs> I'm sorry y'all, but anyways, we're gonna have Blue on, and we're gonna talk about all this stuff. All right, Blue. What's up? It's been a long time. Yeah, it has been. Um, not much is going on. Um, how you been? I know you already addressed to the fans that you've been on hiatus, so we've all been busy. A lot of big things going on in everyone's lives, I guess. Yeah, I forgot to mention too. For those that haven't seen it, if you didn't catch it, if you missed it, I was actually shit. It was a couple weeks back now. Uh, I was on the Eliza Jane show. Um, that's on Comcast and Xfinity Cable and local channels to all of those out there in Pennsylvania and, uh, fucking A, Eagles fans, so that was kind of dope. Mm. Um, and we did a really cool, like, trivia game and your boy came in sixth. That sucks. I mean, it's sixth with, like, the panelists and then people at home playing, so I think it's alright, but... I'd say... Uh, you know, it's funny, actually, any question, anyone that knows me is not surprised that any question that was about fitness and shit and muscle groups, I nailed that shit. Well, (laughs) of course. I even got Disney stuff right, even though I don't know shit about Disney because I'm not a fan. I I know, I was actually quite surprised, and it was like, oh, jeez, Mr. Doesn't Like Disney actually got some right. I legitimately guessed. (laughs) I guessed right. Well, lucky guess, I guess. (laughs) You know, uh, so I I ain't too mad at that. I did all right. Mm -hmm. Um, We actually have... I can't say too much right now until... Just because I want to do this as a package deal when it's ready to launch but i actually have been approached and accepted an ambassadorship from a new sponsor so you'll be hearing about that in future shows and uh with that will come a lot of perks for you guys so there's that oh absolutely i mean great savings for you guys on from the company and hey who doesn't like saving a couple bucks i know i do yeah, all you got to do is mention that your boy Tatna sent you, and you'll be good. Use my link, you'll get discounts, it's dope. So, I will be announcing that in the near future, so just kind of hang in there, and it probably won't be long. So, aside from that, you saw the Halloween Kills trailer. Yes, I did. And, you know, when I saw it? In the words of Vince McMahon, goddamn pal. <laughs> I was fucking happy as shit. I really liked it. I was like, oh my gosh. It just made me so excited considering it got delayed because of, unfortunately, because of COVID, which I'm glad. Because personally, I rather see this film in the theaters rather than stream it from home. So I'm glad they did delay it. It kind of, it did suck at the time, but then it gives you something to look forward to. So when the trailer dropped, I was like, whoa, like, Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, uh, there's not a lot of movies that I make it a point to see the night it comes out. But anytime a Halloween movie comes out, or Nightmare on Elm Street, or anything like that, if they do remakes or whatever, I don't care. Whatever it is, if it comes out, I'm there the night it opens, and I want to fucking see it in the theater. So I got a little nervous when they were starting to play with the idea of the possibility of it just going straight to, like, on demand or something. And I was like, don't do that. Mm. Um, don't rush it. It's worth the wait. Um, so the trailer looks fucking crazy. I can't wait to see the actual movie. So I'm glad that they stuck it out and went the theater route. Me too. You know, but it seems like a lot of movie companies are just going, they're offering both or they're just releasing it uh, streaming via like, uh, say, an app like Disney Plus or uh, Hulu. But I don't know. I just feel like it's going to really hurt people and they're not going to make a lot of money. That's just my opinion. And it does take away from, you know, going to a theater, making it special. It's just a different atmosphere altogether. Yeah, I mean, there's money to be made on both aspects, but I think with certain people especially, when you've put so much effort into a movie and the whole plan all along was for it to be, you know, theater quality and it was made intended, you know, for the theater, everything about it was done with the theater in mind... I think, you know, they held firm on that because it's like, why go through all of that just to, you know, put it on on demand? Because even if you have a really dope surround sound system, it's still not the same as a theater, so... No, it's not. And again, like I said, the atmosphere and that, I mean, it's the, the... the screen's a lot bigger. I mean, a lot of people, maybe they have a great home theater system, and sure, you can pause it, you can have your own food and snacks, but I don't know, it just, it doesn't feel special to me. Like, it just reminds me of the days of Blockbuster, when you'd go, like, my family would typically go Friday night and pick out a bunch of movies to rent and watch it there. It was stuff we didn't really care to see in the theaters. Because, I mean, do going out to the theaters, yes, I do understand it. It can be more expensive, especially for families and that, but... It was special, and especially, like you said, some films are made to be best displayed in a theater setting. Exactly, and I ain't worried about the price or anything, man. If it's worth seeing in the theater and you want to get out, I mean, I I miss that whole concept of going to the movies being as big as it used to be. Um, That was a cool fucking place to go out and just kind of get out of the house and do something cool. I don't do it as often anymore as I used to, but um, that's what makes it kind of special when you do. But I agree. I mean, comedies and shit, you can watch them at home just the same. Uh, There's really no need for massive speakers and a big-ass screen. You're not really missing much. But if you're going to see shit like Fast and the Furious or or fucking you know Halloween or shit like that, I think the theater's the best place for it. Oh, absolutely. I mean... Especially to say, like, you know, you go out with your friends or even for, like, a date, like, dinner and a movie. There's, I always enjoyed going out for a nice dinner at the restaurant, you know, while you're waiting for the movie to start and then go right after. Especially if it's in the same, like, vicinity. It just made it special and kind of just topped off the evening. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that. I mean, that's such a... It's a uh, classic date. Yeah, it's so traditional and, and, you know, for a reason. But at the same time, I have an argument against that when you're going on dates with people and shit, especially when you're getting to know them. Uh, You can't talk in a fucking movie theater, so it's like you don't get to know the person, and I don't think that's ideal. No. Uh, You know. um, I agree. That's why I usually would, uh, personally, I always prefer that as a later date. Like, I'd always go for, like, coffee first. Like you said, I want to sit and talk with the person and get to know them. But, like, just say you've been with someone for a significant amount of time. It is nice. And you're sick of hearing their fucking voice. (laughs) No! (laughs) So you take them to a theater. Shut up, Batman's talking. (laughs) Yeah, you take them to a theater and have them shut the fuck up for a couple hours. That's a pretty solid idea. That could save so many marriages. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, the one thing, though, like I said, a con of going to a movie theater is, you know... 
uh, you can't pause it. So if you got to piss or do something else, you got to leave your seat, walk all the way down, and you miss parts. Not like, hey, can you pause that? Or you miss something, and it's like, oh, hey, you missed that. It's like, well, shit, I'm out of block. I missed it. Yeah, you know, it's like once you miss it, you miss it. And then you just rely on someone to tell you what the fuck you missed and hope it wasn't that good or important. Or one thing I always hated, too, is, like, people kicking the back of your seats. That's why whenever my sister would take my niece and I to the movie, she's like, oh, let's go right to the back, and I never understood it. I understood it there. Or, you know, if it's more of a family movie, it's like, I mean, you know, I get it. People bring their young kids, but then they don't listen. I remember one time, oh, my gosh, there was this young boy. He kept standing up, like, right in the front of everything, and it was hard to see everything. I'm like, oh, God, just please sit down. I can't relate because... I'm six foot five, two hundred and sixty five pounds of fucking muscle. Nobody kicks the back of my seat, bro. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. No, or you know what was really bad that happened to me? I was so pissed. It was um when the first Harry Potter movie came out, you know, those movies were such a big deal and I I think it was two thousand one it came out, so I was about ten, eleven years old. And there was a birthday party behind I was with my parents at the time watching it, and then when we're sitting there, the freaking kids behind us saw it. Gave it away and like, oh, this is when so-and-so dies. And I literally turned around and I said, thanks. You just ruined it, <laughs> you know? And that pissed you off? Yeah, because it's like, you know, you, I read the book a long time ago before, prior to seeing the movie, so I didn't really quite remember what happens. And then they just gave it away. It's like, oh, my God, thanks. You just ruined it. You know what would have pissed me off if I was in your shoes? What? That somebody took me to see fucking Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I wanted to see it, okay? I'm not a fan. Hey, each their own. I'm just saying. <laughs> eh, totally fine, but it's just like I said, when you're watching it and some idiot's already seen it. I mean, it was kids, I get it. Or someone's obnoxious, like, oh yeah, this is when this happens. Like, thanks, you I, just ruined it. I can almost hear the listeners now like, my God, he hates everything. <laughs> Well, that's not true. I can vouch. He does like some things, okay? It's just, you know. But when I do like things, I really like them. Yeah. So there's that. Mm hmm You know, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, huge freak of, the, you know, a fan. And, you know, but to be fair, I also know, like, so many people from those movies. So that kind of is special to me, too. Mm-hmm. Um, Friday the 13th is all right. Sorry, CJ. Uh, I love but CJ. But I love those movies. Hey, man, I, I don't hate them. I'm not saying I, I don't like them either. I'm just saying. You have a preference. Right. There's a pecking order for me. And it's Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween. And then Friday the 13th. Mm. I'm just saying. And sorry, I know I'm friends with CJ Graham and shit. Um, you know, who everyone knows played jason in part six so you know the first one i saw (laughs) i I really like that one actually um i did too but a lot of people hated on it and to be fair i liked it before i I became friends with cj so you're not being biased not at all it's not kissing cj's ass Mm -hmm. um you know fucking it's just i that one was one that i really liked um i love kane hodder as well Mm -hmm. um so but, uh, you know, Halloween's a big one for me, and Nightmare on Elm Street I grew up with, so, you know, I, that's a preference, always has been, and uh, even when they're bad, they're still pretty fucking good. So. Yeah, well, it's the character, it's like, you love the character, and, you know, d- I think we may have discussed this in prior shows and that, it's like, with those movies, it's like, you kind of cheer for the bad guy, it's like, you don't want the people to die, but it's just, they're so larger than life and comical like freddy krueger it's like yeah get him get him but you're not sick in the head it's just you know the character yeah you get attached yeah i mean that's everybody though everybody loves that character um hell well we're on the subject actually (laughs) anybody that would be interested in buying my homeboy mick strawn's book he worked on the set of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4, and he actually had a lot of ideas to help create the movie uh, story for 4. Um, if you'd be interested in buying his book um, about his time on working on 4, it has pictures, it has stories about being on set and all sorts of shit. It's really, really cool. Mm-hmm. And he signs it with like a personalized message. And if you'd be interested in buying that, email me at tatnus at tatnusco.com and I will put you through to him 
and you can buy it from him directly. Oh, it's it's great. You won't be disappointed. I got it on my horror shelf, and it's personalized, and it's really, really cool. So anybody that's interested, man, I can hook you up with a uh, contact to buy it from him. So uh, he would definitely appreciate the sales, and he put a lot of work into that book. Mm-hmm. And if you're like a horror movie collector, it's pretty much a must-have in my view. Oh, absolutely. Because it's right from the man himself. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, show your man uh, Mick Strawn some love. But I just love the fact that he spelled your name wrong. I know. He's such a dick. He tries to slight me every chance he gets just because that's what we do. We bust each other's balls. Everybody knows. He's been on this show a few times now. Mm-hmm. And we're actually hosting a show in the future together. But he's busy right now working on movies. And then... By the time he's free, I'll be working on fucking movies. So one day, you know, probably in like 3036, we'll fucking get around to it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because I'll still be alive for some fucking reason. Well, you better be. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like seven bajillion years old and we'll finally get around to it. You know? <laughs> but uh, he's such a good dude. I love him. Mm, and absolutely. I got to get him on my show again just because I miss that fucking guy. Yeah. He calls me uh, at random. Quite, quite frequently, like every so often, and then he kind of fucks my day up and harasses me and then leaves. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, he's awesome. I love my phone calls from Mick. Um, he's, like, the most interesting cat, too, because he worked on Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4. Uh, he did the effects for the movie Blade, uh, the first one that came out in 98. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is super fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's got a lot of cool stories. That's why I always want to bring him back on the show. Um, so, you know, fucking, he's somebody I want to do horror with. And I think that's got to happen. Absolutely. It has to happen. You know, like inevitably we mm-hmm. have to. So we're going to talk about that at some point. I'm going to get him on the phone and we're going to fucking do this. And he's going to fucking learn to like it. <laughs> Or else what? I haven't thought that far ahead yet. Um, so, I mean, we'll figure it out. Maybe I'll beat him with his own book. I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> Damn. Violence. That's the only thing he understands. <laughs> um, and insults. Yeah, of course. Oh, man. <laughs> I love Mick. So if you want his book, hit me up, tatness at tatnessco.com, and I can make that happen for you. It is so worth the fucking money. I swear. It's so good, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely amazing. Love Mick. Shout out to Mick. He's fucking great. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's quite the character, isn't he? He's hilarious, man. <laughs> you know, and he, he's just done so much work that, you know, he's gotten to work on such cool movies and shit that he's got stories for days and experience, you know. Mm-hmm. He's been in the industry so long that, you know, he's, he's seen it all. He's done it all. Very cool. Knows so many people. We have so many fucking mutual friends in the movie industry that, um, you know, I didn't even realize we had. So it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And then I mentioned um, to Eliza on the show just before we went on the air that I'm like, oh, you know Mick. And she's like, who? I was like, Mick Strong. She's like, I don't know, dude. Fucking (laughs) add people. (laughs) And then, you know, then they're there. I don't know. Um, so they're like Facebook fucking friends or something, but she doesn't really know who he is. Or knows him on a personal level. Right, right, yeah. They don't really know each other on a personal level, but, you know, it's good to have contacts, I guess. And, uh, I had a blast on her show, too. Mm -hmm. So shout out to everybody on the Eliza Jane show. That was fucking so much fun. They want me to come back and be like a panelist and, uh, kind of be on more frequently on TV. And I was like, yeah, dude, fucking... You know, when things calm down a little bit, and I don't have, like, a bajillion fucking things going on, I definitely want to do that again, because that was fun. And I got to do better than six plays. (laughs) (laughs) That's a personal thing. Oh, boy, you got to be number one, don't you? Mm Mm-hmm. Of course. Well, shit. Why not, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Aim for the best. And, you know. But don't cheat, okay? <laughs> you know, like, goddamn. <laughs> it's so random. Like, you don't even know what the questions are going to be. And then it's like, holy shit. This, you go from, like, one type of question to something totally different. That's unrelated. Yeah, completely unrelated. And it's like, shit. Um, so you're kind of, like, on your toes the whole time because you don't know what to expect. Yeah. Uh, but it's really fun because... You're playing with other people, and not only do you get points, like, for just for getting it right, but you have to, it, 
you get more points for getting it right the fastest. So, you know, they they have a timer for everybody. Like, so whoever got it the fastest gets the most points. So that puts you on the board. And like I said, there is, um, I told you off air, that there was a guy who was, like, in first for the majority of it. And then he ends up in fifth. Ooh. You know, like, it can change that quick. Uh, so, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, like, you can get all the right answers, but somebody keeps getting it faster than you. Um, it's that easy, you mm-hmm. know, to, to lose your spot. So it was really competitive, really challenging, but so much fun. And, yeah. You know, it wasn't like a heated competition. It was actually, you know, just totally fun. Mm-hmm. But it was a blast, and I had so much fun doing it because I'm so full of fucking useless information. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. I mean, but you do know a lot. I'm always, but then I'm always like, hey, do you know about this and that? Why does this and that? And you're like, I don't friggin' know. Yeah, you know, then it becomes the downfall because it's like, hey, you know fucking everything. It's like, I don't have a fucking clue. <laughs> I know, but I'm like, hey, this is my personal encyclopedia that I know, so I'm going to ask you into using my phone. I'm just going to start lying and saying I don't know shit. So I'll be like, I don't fucking know. Even if I do know, I'll be like, I have no idea. <laughs> or give wrong information and then make me look like an idiot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm a troll. That's something I would do. For sure. I mean, shit. So back to the Halloween trailer because I found it amusing that there was like a year of people complaining. They just give us a trailer if you're going to postpone the movie. And I'm like, nobody's going to give you a trailer like a year in advance if they've postponed the fucking movie. Mm -hmm. So um, then they get, like, they keep begging for a trailer. They finally get a fucking teaser trailer, and they're like, what the fuck? Just a teaser trailer? That's it? It's so short. And it's like, okay. So then they give them a a two-and-a-half-minute fucking trailer, and now they're bitching that it showed too much. I don't know. You can't win with these people. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't think it showed too much. I mean, their complaint is, well, it shows this person's dead. This person is like, you're going based on, cult, like, clothing. Mm-hmm. But it's called Halloween Kills. So don't you fucking think that a lot of people are probably going to fucking get dead real fast? <laughs> yeah, like, Myers is going to kill people. Hence yeah, the yeah, title. He, like, Jesus, what do you expect? Yeah. Um... I don't know if people were complaining about the gore factor in the uh, trailer, but I didn't have an issue with it. No, not that I've seen. I haven't seen anybody complain about that. Oh, I thought they did. I mean, well, I mean, it's already posted, but in the trailer they show, like, the firemen. If you've seen the first um, installment of the trilogy, the new trilogy, uh, Laurie Strode's house is on fire and Myers is in there and the fire department goes to save him and... Yeah, let's just say they use Myers uses the tools on the firemen and Well, it's in the trailer, so you're not giving anything away. Yeah, well that's true, but I was like, "Oh, damn, cuz they used the saw on one of the guys." Yeah, that was I was like, "Holy gnarly. crap." Uh, I think the movie's going to show a lot more than the trailer did. I think the trailer cuts at the right time to not show all the gore. It's, so they can get away with it's it. It's mostly implied, but I think the movie's going to surprise people by showing it and just being really brutal Mm. and i think people might need to prepare themselves for that reality because i think people are thinking that the trailer what they've seen is pretty much it but i think that's a slick edit to be able to show that it's brutal without showing all the gore because you can't show that in a trailer um you have to kind of keep it somewhat uh presentable to, Mm -hmm. to uh you know other audiences that may not need to be seeing that kind of thing in the first place but they will you know Mm -hmm. so uh but no just the hardcore fans were complaining that it's showing all the bodies of the people that die so now they know who's gonna die and it's like who the fuck is gonna live that's more shocking it's fucking called halloween kills the next one is supposed to be the final one so by that point it should be a pretty even playing field. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, There's probably not going to be a whole lot of survivors by the time that one fucking hits. So I don't know why people are shocked. And, you know, some people are calling out those fans too, saying, you know, you you guys fucking just always want to bitch about something because it didn't show too fucking much. It was, you know, what it it is what it is. Like, you know, they loved it. And 
you know, mm-hmm. I, 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 it is what it is. Like one dude in uh, one of the Facebook groups I saw uh, for the movie was saying he's not going to watch the trailer because in 2018 when that was coming out he saw the closet part and he says it ruined it for him i'm like really if you were in the theater and you saw the closet door won't close you're gonna fucking immediately know why well yeah it's kind of like you know a staple of what these movies are it's a fucking jump scare that's just so predictable I'm not saying it wasn't cool as hell, but, you know, like, what the fuck else would be the issue? You yeah, know? What else is going to be in the closet? Yeah, come on. So, I think people are just looking for something to complain about because they've spent a year waiting for this movie, and, you know, um, that's the problem with waiting a year is, you know, you hope it lives up to the expectations of people, but it's kind of impossible at this point. You can't please everyone. No, and these days it's hard to fucking please anyone. Oh my god, it seems people just complain more and more. If it's not like, oh my god, I I just can't right now. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, why bother trying at this point? You know what I mean? It's like, do your thing, and those who get it, get it. Those who don't... Too bad, basically. You know, fuck them. Yeah. They, they, they don't need to. It's not intended for them, then. Mm-hmm. It's intended for those who appreciate it, just like everything we've ever done. That has been my philosophy, is... My fans get it, and they fucking dig it, and that's all that matters. I'm, I don't really care if outsiders, you know, fucking decide that they don't like it or whatever. They're cool. Don't fucking pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. It's not for you. And if you do dig it, it is for you. It's intended for people like you and me, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, making movies is no different than doing what I do or, you know, and I do movies too, but I mean, doing shit like this, for example, it's like, be who you are and those who get it will get it and those who don't, you don't need them anyway, you know what I mean? But don't change yourself for other people to try to please everybody and try to fucking get like a bajillion fucking listeners when you have millions, that's good enough, you know what I mean? Like... You're not going to get everybody to fucking be on board with you because there are people that just don't like anything. There's miserable fucking people out oh there. There's people God. that just want to be different. They just want to, oh, well, everybody likes this guy, so I fucking, I think he sucks. You know what I mean? Everyone wants to be different than the the rest, you know? You know, sometimes it's like to the point where it's a little excessive. It's like, oh, really, you know? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's sometimes pretty transparent. Um, when somebody's just trying to be contrary to everybody else and, you know, it, oh, you got a million fucking listeners. You got millions of listeners. You got like 5 million plus listeners. Well, I, th- I don't like your shit. All right, cool. You know what I'm so? saying? Out of like fucking 5 plus million people, do you think I really notice if you show up in my analytics or not? You know what I mean? Like, you have every right to dislike my shit if you want to. I haven't had any... This is theoretical. I haven't had anybody talk shit, so that's cool. Well, no, I think there was the one time, and it was involving Roy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was really funny, yeah. (laughs) That was a social media, like, person that took it way too personal when I said, you know, fuck Roy from Friday the 13th, that, that imposter Jason. <laughs> uh, I said on the, on my show, that's the theme is, you know, fuck you, Roy. <laughs> uh, fuck Roy, that, you know, that one sucked. And mm-hmm. this dude was just like, oh, so in other words, don't listen to your show then. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, you, if, you, if that's how you feel about it, sure, go ahead. And guess what? Uh, We're nope. not going to miss you. Like, dude, like I'm going to fucking notice that you're not there. Um and then people called them out, which was really funny. They're like, if you had any fucking idea who you're talking to, uh, you'd feel pretty stupid. You know, mm-hmm. like, dude's got, like, millions of fucking listeners and fans and, you know, is doing all sorts of kind of shit that, you know, you're doing what exactly for a living? Like, so. who are you? Right. So, you know, fucking, I don't think he's going to lose sleep over you not listening to his show because he obviously offended you by not liking the same movie as you. <laughs> You know, it's just mm-hmm. so nonsensical. I didn't say shit because I'm not. I'm not that guy. 
I'm not going to get into some, like, fucking... Nonsense, basically. Social media fucking battle with some stranger. Like, it's not my style, man. Mm Mm-hmm. Not really for me, you know. Uh, You gotta fucking kind of piss me off to a certain level for me to respond to you. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And it just, you know, it was just amusing to me, honestly. Um, So that was weird, but I didn't have to say anything. A bunch of fans kind of jumped in and took care of that for me. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, you never heard from that dude again. So, you know, it's just one of those comments, right? It makes you think, like, really, really, do you think I care? You know, it it was literally just that. It's not like he went out of his way to email me or anything. It was a fucking comment on a post. It was like, all right, cool. You know, a comment on a comment kind of deal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was kind of weird. And he, I think he tried to, like, defend himself to a degree with some kind of nonsense. Where he's like, oh, well, if he's, like, you know, that important and shit, why is he in a fucking Facebook group? And they're like, because he's a fucking normal person like everybody else. Like, he he doesn't have an ego like that. You know, like, he's too good to associate with the rest of us. If we're fans of the same stuff as him, he's going to talk to people. Well, shit, yeah. Like, are you not allowed like, to yeah, they're do like, normal things? They're like, okay, so first you're upset that he doesn't like the same shit as you, and now you're upset that he's down to earth? Okay. That's weird. But, yeah. all right. You know. Whatever, dude. So I was like, oh, that's cool. People are standing up, you know. That's, mm-hmm. that's nice. Um, so, you know, even in spite of the absence, man, people have been getting caught up on, like, the older shows. That was really cool to see. Uh, the analytics are always blowing up, and uh, I appreciate that, man. Oh, um, absolutely. And, you know, it was really cool, too, is I actually got a message today from somebody saying, hey, man, I love your show. And I was like, that's really fucking cool. You know what I mean? Like, that's super cool to me. Uh, I appreciate that. So shout out to them as well. It's just impossible for me to not really appreciate that. No matter how much that happens, I always appreciate it because I don't know how you could not. You know what I mean? Uh, I think it takes a certain ego to lose sight of why you do what you do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people appreciate what you do, that's a really cool thing in my view. So... I really like that, man. That that kind of made my day. I was like, that's cool to hear from somebody that, you know, felt comfortable to touch base and, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. I like that shit. So, shout out to them. Thank you. That was really cool. Yeah. Definitely appreciated. I'm all hopped up on, like, Sugar Free Monster. <laughs> um, I had mentioned that I feel like I've been hit by a fucking truck because of training for an, an upcoming movie and, uh... God damn, I am sore. <laughs> like, super sore. But a good sore. Oh, yeah. I love it. It's just, you know, I'm solid, though. So, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Like, I am fucking hard as a rock right now. Like, my chest, <laughs> shoulders, not. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my mind went to a bad place. Of course it did, because you're a fucking degenerate. <laughs> well, I'm a prevert, okay? <laughs> you know, but my shoulders, my arms, my chest, everything is just fucking solid. So, I mean, it, it's worth it. Well, yeah, I mean, here, out here in Nova Scotia, I mean, we're definitely starting opening up. It looks like, you know, I'm starting to slowly see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm pretty sure all of us can say, like our fitness or weight has kind of gotten out of hand and i've gotten back into training myself thanks to you helped me out with my diet and everything and i feel great but man it was awful i remember when we first kind of met i was pretty heavy and i'm pretty much back to where i was and i'm like oh damn you know being locked up in that and yes a little bit of a little bit of green, if you know what i mean you're not where you were though that's not fair i mean maybe i'm being like excessively hard and exaggerating but it's like man we're our, we're all our own worst critics though so that's you know, understandable but you're not fucking there like at all so but hey man everybody's got shit to work on you know what i mean well yeah and it's like i don't know about you guys but whenever the weather gets nicer summer weather spring weather the sun's shining i just feel like a million bucks like i just feel like oh my gosh things are great you know, and things are turning around, and I just feel so, like, motivated in that, and just wanting change. Yeah, I mean, between the brightness of the sunny days and, and that, the warmth. that vitamin D, man, really helps the moods, you know? It does, and, you know, they do recommend you take vitamin D, like, daily as a supplement and that, but it's just not the same. Like, the actual sunlight just 
brightens your mood. And unfortunately in Canada, we don't get a lot of sunlight. So come the winter months, it's like, oh, it kind of, it puts a damper on your mood. Yeah, winter, you don't get a lot of sunlight because it gets dark earlier. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's not like we're fucking in permanent dark or anything. So. Oh, God. But still, yeah, we have our moments where it's like this blows. <laughs> Especially when you don't like cold weather either. Well, I mean, that's anywhere you go, really. You get your moments. Not, I don't think there's really anywhere in the world where the weather's absolutely perfect. There's always like, this is great, but we got this. Like, we get a shit ton of rain or it's dry heat or whatever. Yeah, we've had a few days here, though, where it's been fucking hotter than a volcano's booty crease. <laughs> so. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's uh, it's been rough. Very rough. But I would take the heat over the cold any day, so I ain't mad. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, it gets fucking hot. It does, and I mean, but... And then again, that's just me. I prefer summer months. And I, I'm so strange. When I was younger, I always wanted for my birthday to be in summer, July, for some reason. And, of course, what did I get? I got a cruel joke of being born in November. But fuck. at least not not like you, Mr. Yeah, I January. Say, I was going to say, fuck you. I got it the worst. <laughs> you know, I'm dead set fucking in winter. That blows. Well, I mean, I've always, I may have said this in the past, but I always feel sorry. I have, like, my grandmother and my cousin that are whose birthdays are also in january and i feel like i feel sorry for you january babies because it's like you know with the holidays and that i feel like january just kind of goes by and everyone's like fuck this i'm just over everything right now so i do feel for you guys hey man i still have fun <laughs> hey there you go because then you got christmas then you got new year's then my birthday and you know all solid excuses to get fucking drunk <laughs> <laughs> no. there you go yeah I, I, I don't fucking really like doing that i feel like shit and then it's like i'm not 20 anymore dude i can't get away with that i feel like dog shit the next day or the next few days oh and god and you're trying to recover yeah i'd rather just be in the gym well shit the joys of aging but then it's like you know you feel like crap no i, I don't even think it's aging for me i think it's just that i take such care of myself and I'm in the gym and shit, and I eat fucking stupid clean, you know, like ridiculously clean. So when I put shit like that in my body, man, I fucking notice, you know? And you just, it just don't feel right. No, when you feel like a million bucks every day and then you're hungover, wow. Oh, Night and day. Worst. And the worst for me, because I'm more of a, a weed smoker myself, and I get the bad munchies, and you know this. I tend to overdo it because the flavors, I'm in love, like, the flavors are just so enhanced, so I eat too much and then I get indigestion, I wake up, I'm like, uh, bloating. That's probably what contributed to my weight gain. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to announce this earlier in the show, I mentioned that I couldn't announce this, but it's a huge project, but fuck it, since we're back and we have their attention again um not that they seem to have left which is great but uh, thanks guys i appreciate that so fuck it why not let them be the first to hear this oh. because i have not announced this on social media or anywhere only a handful of people know and that's because they are involved in it um but the big project that has taken some of my time away from the show is that here at uh, tatnisco studios we are working on developing a video game Mm -hmm. And no, it's not about me or whatever the fuck. You know, it's not a Tatnus game or anything stupid like that. It's not some ego-driven horse shit. <laughs> um, it's actually uh, an RPG game because I absolutely love Final Fantasy VII and all the ones before it. Now, this is by no means, you know, the graphics of a Final Fantasy VII or the gameplay. It's more like the older ones for it's Super Nintendo kind of deal, but better graphics than that. And uh, I'm designing everything. I'm designing the maps and, you know, the characters and everything. So it's going to be very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so much fun. So far, the feedback I've gotten on the maps and everything, people have been fucking in love with it. And uh, Mira Morningstar that we talked about earlier, who will be my co-star in my upcoming movie and has been a guest on the show uh, from the UK, will be, uh, she has been doing the music for each map bless her heart she's been oh, she's, super kind she's incredibly talented if you haven't listened to her music do yourself a favor and check her out yeah she does like fantasy ambient music 
So it was just perfect. It was like, dude, I've been working on something like this since 2015, but then my son was born 2016 with a terminal condition, and I just scrapped the whole fucking project. So I thought, you know what? Now's the time to, in his honor, bring it back. And, you know, I know more now about this stuff than I did back then. So it, it's actually a blessing in disguise because it's going to be a better game now. And uh, with her help especially, and I'm going to have voice actors, and it's going to be super cool. She's going to be involved in the process. She's done some really solid music for each map that I've done so far and more to come. Mm -hmm. And she's just so talented. It's crazy. And she's actually a a character in it, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Her with her... um, her bird, Snoo, who is, like, so beautiful. Oh, he's an African gray parrot. He's so gorgeous. Wonderful. And so he's in it as well, which is great. Um, and if you like Final Fantasy and Zelda and stuff like that, it's kind of a bit of all of that. There's Easter eggs in it that are nods to games that I absolutely love, that I respect, that kind of influenced a lot of this, too. Uh, so you, you'll have a lot to look at. Um, and I will be announcing when that drops. And uh, some people may have noticed that the platform, the major platform that this show, our show, is on, I put my show on, you know, uh, a lot of major, pretty much every major platform. Mm-hmm. You, you can get it on Amazon, Google, um, iHeartRadio has it, everybody. So, but on the main platform that i chose to do business with uh launchpad one which is podcast one's subsidiary they have now added a link in the description of the show where you can make donations to the show via paypal uh like i said i'd never ask anybody for donations but there are times when people ask if they can donate um sometimes it's for whatever reason sometimes it's for nkh research they would like to help out with the research for you know uh the charities that fund research for the condition that took my child's life which i think is beautiful Mm -hmm. i appreciate that or they want to you know do other things with that and donate maybe because they love the show or donate because they want to help fund a project or something so that's an option now so if you see that that's why um so that's a new change to the platform that Mm -hmm. they've added um so there's no confusion there uh the show is still free of (laughs) course we're not charging for it you don't have to pay for it or else uh you know especially the fact that i just got this new ambassadorship with a new sponsor is super cool um it will be a long-term relationship there and uh We've had a lot of talks recently, and everybody's gung-ho about this partnership. So The products are great. Yeah, they approached me. I loved it, and I agreed to do business with them. So you'll be hearing more about that down the road. There will be a video and an audio version of the ad. And don't you worry. I don't want to bore you with really boring ads, so it will be entertaining and humorous. And uh, I think you guys will get a kick out of it, so... You know, it's not going to be all that uptight and serious. So uh, the link will be added to tatnusco.com as well, where you could get your discount if you choose to buy the products. And all you got to do is click the link. It'll take you right to where to get the product. And you'll get a discount because of me passing that on to you. Mm-hmm. And that's that, basically. Just make sure at the checkout you add the co- um, the discount code tatness yes is that with a capital or a lowercase it's all lowercase okay just Um, so there's no confusion just to help receive that discount for you guys and kick a little back to the t-man himself yeah it doesn't cost you guys anything extra in fact you save money as well so there's that it's the beauty of it it helps both of us so you know help a brother out if you so choose and you'll save yourself some ducats yourself Mm mm-hmm Ain't mad at that. Who isn't? <laughs> I mean, you know me, like, I'm the biggest couponer, especially online shopping. You always laugh at me. I'll sit there and try different codes all the time. It is true. But, hey, who's laughing when you save some money? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Better in your pocket than theirs, right? Yep. You know? So, 
I'm pretty stoked about that partnership. Absolutely. And I'm pretty stoked about this game. It's going to be fun as hell. Um, really emphasizing the story. Really working on focusing on side missions. And here's the thing. is I'm making it uh, very interesting and layered. And what I mean by that is there's going to be side missions that whatever you choose to do will affect things down the road. So it'll change the outcome of the game. So if you decide to help people or something, it'll have, you know, one type of outcome. If you choose not to, then that will change that outcome. So you never know what story you're going to get. So I think that keeps it interesting. No, oh, absolutely. What about you? You like games like that, yeah? Yeah, you actually introduced me to Final Fantasy VII, and I've been helping you out with the game as well, which is a lot of fun. It's a fun challenge. I enjoy that. But yeah, Final Fantasy VII. I... Had I never was really into Final Fantasy because I did own a PlayStation 1. I got it later on. I did mod it. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. And um, I had Final Fantasy Tactics on uh, my Game Boy Advance, but a lot of people did not like uh, Tactics, so I didn't really know. And then you told me about it, and I tried it out. I have a little mini uh, PlayStation that has built-in games, and you can add more. I'm not going to tell you how I did it, because I guess it's not legal, but whatever. <laughs> it probably is. And it's so much fun, and I didn't realize they remade it, and it is beautiful. The graphics and the story, I'm, like, playing this, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, I love 7. It's one of my favorite games ever. Um, I have not played Tactics, but I've heard bad things. I heard people didn't like it at all because they were expecting it to be like seven and it was so different that mm -hmm. they're like, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. um, but I also had seven Dirge of Cerberus, which was like the branch off, which was Vincent Valentine's story for basically while seven was going on. This mm -hmm. is what he was out doing. Oh. And a lot of people shit on that one too. They didn't like it because it was like a, a running shooter kind of game. Um, which I kind of really got into. I liked it. Uh, I think a lot of people didn't like it because it didn't feel like a Final Fantasy VII game um, outside of the fact of who the character was. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was a running shooter game. But then if you look at the uh, remake of Seven, they kind of... It looks like they kind of ditched the whole turn-based thing. So you really get to run around freely in battle, so... Uh, it's almost the same idea. I love Dirge of Cerberus. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was a cool story, and uh, I beat it, and I liked the ending. It was kind of really heavy and cool. Hmm. So I liked it. Uh, a lot of people didn't. So, I mean, that just goes to show, just because people say they didn't like something doesn't mean you won't. So try it out. You know, be the judge of yourself. Like, you know, because it's not popular, maybe you'll like it. Yeah, I mean, tactics, I just, you know... When I heard what it is, I was like, oh, that doesn't sound like it's for me at all. Well, see, that was the first one I ever played. I mean, my original memories is my cousin had, was it 8 that was uh, released on PS2? It was like one of the first launch titles of the PS2. Yeah, I didn't like it just because I was expecting it to be a, a, a sequel to 7. Mm -hmm. And when I played it, immediately I saw it was not the same characters, not the same story or anything. And I was like, this blows. Yeah. Well, like I said, my cousin had it, so I kind of watched him play it because he had the PS2. I did not. I had a GameCube. And then I saw Tactics was for Game Boy Advance, so I'm like, oh, you know, I want it for Christmas, and that's all I really knew, so... Did you just say GameCube? I swear I said GameCube. <laughs> oh, dear. I hope I did not. <laughs> that's hilarious. Maybe I did if I did. My bad. Whatever, dude. It's all good. <laughs> um, we know where your mind's at. But, uh, yeah, you know, 7 was so important to me that I just could not get into 8 when I realized it was not a continuation of 7 in any way. So I was like, this is a fucking letdown. I uh, was so invested in the story of 7. So that just shows they did a great job on that. I'm not saying 8 is terrible. I didn't play it enough to find out if it was actually good. But it wasn't for you. I just couldn't get into it. I was so let down at that time. But this is like years back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like decade or like over a decade ago. So, uh, god damn, this is probably 2002. So... <laughs> shoot uh yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. so and i never touched it since um it was just such a shock to me that it wasn't the same characters in a continuation of seven 
And I know people are probably like, dude, seven was three discs long. What fucking more do you want? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but, you know, I just, I never wanted it to end. It was yeah. just so good. Oh, man. I love Barrett in that game. He's so I always funny. liked him, yeah. He's always pissed off. It's fucking great. He's cranky. <laughs> and then Sid, who just fucking cusses all the time, he's always pissed off, too. And I was like, wow, he makes Barrett look like a fucking Care Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Care Barrett. Care Bear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, um, but, it, you know, I love Seven so much. You just find yourself attached to every character. You're so invested in the story, and uh, you play it long enough. I mean, it's three discs that you grow into it. Like, they grow on you, and it gets really heavy. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. Once we got past that, I just, you know, once I realized eight wasn't the same, I was like, nah. Not and, be interested. Yeah, even the ones after that, you know, they got really cool for PS2 and whatever, PS3. I just couldn't do it. Couldn't get into them. I, you know, they're very well done. The graphics are beautiful. And I played 12, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, or 10. And, I, meh. you know, like, it, it's well done. It's beautiful and all, but it just didn't hold my attention. Yeah. I, I was just so fixated on 7. So I guess it's just a special place in my heart. Because it was the first PlayStation 1 game I ever got, so... Yeah. You know what I mean? It's sentimental to me. Um, so maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But wow. I just thought it was super well done. Even yeah. even after seeing the remake and how beautiful it is, I was like, there's still some charm to the first, like, original. Uh, even though the graphics are nowhere near as nice and whatever, it's still beautiful, and the graphics are amazing for the system you know and the capabilities oh, okay. absolutely uh you cannot match that with that system i can't think of a game for playstation one that has better graphics than final fantasy 7 i can't think of any either nothing comes to mind no um hell if anybody thinks of any you can hit me up tatness at tatnessco.com and let me know what you think if you feel like you know of a game that has better graphics um, or even better gameplay for that matter. I'm curious, but uh, let's debate on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, healthy debate's always nice. Oh, um, absolutely. Or, or maybe you'll be turning me on to a game I never played before, and, uh, you know, I'll check it out. I recently started playing GTA 2, you know, for the first time in fucking forever again. <laughs> it's, it's dumb. It's, it's fun, but it's stupid. Like, <laughs> in, in my hands, I mean. Oh, uh, my goodness. There's a button to actually fart at people. And belch. So, like, I'm just running in front of people and then farting at them. And, and they run away. You know, it, it's so funny. <laughs> it, it's so stupid. I'm so mature. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this is what I do with my time, you know, when I have downtime. It, it's it's not pretty. Uh, I, this is why I keep busy. <laughs> gets into trouble you know Mm. it's just a reminder that i'm an idiot (laughs) so i gotta keep busy oh come on now but anyways um so you know the movies i'm training for the movie uh there's a couple movies i got in the barrel Mm -hmm. and um you know the game now and now we'll be doing the show more regularly again thanks for hanging on Mm -hmm. uh i know like i said i know the hiatus was a little bit unannounced but i also didn't expect things to turn out the way they did Mm -hmm. and that was quite a shocker to me and so it was just spending some time getting caught up with my mom man Mm -hmm. um so i hope nobody can fault me for that yeah you know what i mean uh i think they would do the same in my shoes Mm -hmm. 38 years and not knowing your mom you know you're probably going to want to spend some time talking and kind of learn about each other you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i just thought it was really cool that she was tripping out when i called her that she knew like you know what i've been up to and that i became famous and shit and she was just so proud and i was like that's crazy i never thought i'd hear that in my life you know what i mean so that's fucking heavy that was really cool that just made my day Mm -hmm. uh, made my life you know really cool man um you know she's got some of the magazines and shit that i was in and really nice you know it's Mm -hmm. it's cool to be able to give her stuff too and you know fucking get caught up and get her caught up as to what i've been doing with my life Mm -hmm. and uh i'm gonna try and get her in some stuff too and see how things go and go out and see her so you know maybe get her on the show and we can 
shoot the breeze about things. She's a hardcore wrestling fan. Oh, yes. Really cool. And she has a thing for Steve Austin. She thinks he's just the finest dude on the fucking planet. <laughs> um, <laughs> as you, you told me, she said, oh, he's sexy as hell. Oh, yeah, she did. I'm like, Mom, come on, man. <laughs> like, I don't fucking need to hear this. <laughs> Anyways, man, before we traumatize my listeners, uh, I think that's about it for this show. I think so. And... Uh, We'll be back again this time. We won't be fucking gone for a month. Everything's kind of calming down. And I'm going to balance everything now. Uh, once things are in place, I'll be training. I'll be doing the fucking project. I'll be hitting y'all with the video for the new sponsor and unveiling that gem. And, man, training my ass off for the movies and, you know, lots of stuff. But... We'll be back to the show more frequently mm -hmm. and try to get some really cool guests. Uh, there is one I'd like to line up. I can't announce him yet, but I think y'all will recognize him from a certain horror movie. Uh, pretty big movie, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, pretty iconic character. So it's good to know people. <laughs> Let's just say that. You lucky bastard. <laughs> when, when I can uh, confirm that he will be on, then I will announce it. So I will try for the next show to get the green light on that one. Mm -hmm. Until then, thanks for checking us out. Thanks for hanging in there. Shout out to India and, uh, you know, for being so supportive, but also terrible what's going on over there with COVID, man. I feel for y'all. My thoughts are with all of you guys, man. That's so heavy. It's got to be really fucking hard. Uh, so thoughts are with you guys, man. And I hope you pull through. I hope things get better out there. Mm -hmm. Thank you for supporting the show in spite of all the craziness going on out there. Uh, it actually means a lot more. You know, uh, I always appreciate the support. But knowing that things are so heavy out there right now and so bad and y'all are still taking time to listen to my show, man, I don't know if it brings you some kind of comfort or something, man, or it gets your mind off things. But I do appreciate all the support. And everywhere else, man. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of our brothers over in the U.S. and uh, just everywhere. Ireland, I love y'all. And uh, my Irish ass appreciates your support as well. Mm -hmm. Russia as well. I love you guys, man. You're always in my analytics and listening and, to the show. And Germany too, man. Oh, really Germany. Busy. Love Germany and the U.K. as well, of course. Like, that's a given. Um, they know this. But uh, definitely shout out to them as well. They're always out there. And uh, they, they're really digging that Mira show because she's so wonderful, man. And she lived in Germany for quite a bit of her life and now lives in the UK. So wonderful person. And so I guess wherever she goes, they follow. So that's dope. And she's so talented. She, like, please yeah. do yourself a favor and check her stuff out. Absolutely. Support her, man. She needs it. She's, you know, so deserving. Um, you know, she works so hard. She deserves to be compensated for it. So... You know, buy some of her products, man. Buy her some of her music and shit and see if it doesn't mellow you out. Mm -hmm. I want to just smoke a bunch of the old jazz cabbage and just listen to her stuff and just zone out, dude. It's so peaceful. It's crazy. It's relaxing. It's amazing. So every time she sends me stuff for the game, um, I'm just like, yes, so excited. Mm -hmm. So that being said, love y'all, man. Thank you for the support. Endless support. You're appreciated. My thoughts are with India and everywhere else that's suffering with this COVID shit. Let's get it over with, man. Let's just end this shit. Once and for all. You know, it's annoying. Um, so stay safe, man. And I'll catch your asses later. Yep. See you next time. Choose the browser that puts you first. Microsoft Edge empowers you to browse your way with fast performance, strong security, and innovation that matters. Whether you're shopping, searching, streaming, or just browsing, Microsoft Edge helps you save time, money, and peace of mind. With incredible speed and security, Microsoft Edge makes staying in the flow safer and simple by being tailored to how you manage your browsing and adapting to your preferences. Stay protected with built-in security features that scan and block potentially dangerous sites, check your saved passwords for breaches, and help generate stronger passwords anytime you make a new account. Microsoft Edge offers the highest rated protection against phishing and malware attacks on Windows 10. For younger users, Microsoft Edge also has Kids Mode, which offers a fun, tailored experience with added protection for web users ages 5 to 12. 
Save money with automatic coupon price comparison and price history tools. Make money for yourself or even your favorite causes with cash back and Microsoft rewards in Bing. Explore what awaits when you expect more from your browser with Microsoft Edge and raise your expectations for what the web can be. Microsoft Edge, security, speed, and innovation built for you.